Hey what's up everybody, thank you for checking this video. If you want to see more, please leave a like and subscribe. But even if you don't, enjoy and happy coding! This episode is brought to you by Skysilk. If you're looking for a free Linux-based VPS in the cloud, go to skysilk.com. No strings attached. Just awesome stuff. Welcome to another tutorial. Let's quickly style our form here to have a better look. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna create some unique CSS classes in order to hide all these messages and set those specific classes and then we're gonna use in our JavaScript when we have to deal with error, success messages and stuff like that. First, let's start by defining an ID for our form and in my case, I'm gonna name it alicad testimonial form and I strongly suggest you to use a prefix with your unique name and try to identify a unique name ID for your form for two main reasons. First, the CSS that we're gonna define here for the form group, all these type of classes that we define here, should be wrapped always around a unique ID because this testimonial form is printed in the front end of the user and our plugin shouldn't override the CSS of the user. So if you wrap everything around everything with SCSS is dependent by a unique ID, we shouldn't interfere with uh, other type of styles, even if the user has a class that is the same name of a class that we're using, we should not interfere with that class. And the second reason is that we need it for JavaScript. In order to handle the form submit and uh, listen for the form submit event and track and deal with this form, we need to identify by a unique ID. It's easier to do it by element ID and not by classes because we could have multiple classes. With element ID, it's way easier. So I strongly suggest you to create a unique identifier for that form. Now that we have that, we can access our form.scss file. Let's copy this ID and we can start styling the classes of our form. Before doing that though, let's access our terminal and the location of our plugin. Let's trigger our usual gulp watch. So our script will watch for changes for the style in JavaScript and automatically reload those files, which is perfect. That's what we wanted. So let's define our ID here. And let's start collecting all these type of classes. So first, the form group, I wanna change it for the form group because form group is a default class of bootstrap. I'm gonna call these for something like field container, something like that. Then I have the form field and I have the field message. So instead of form field, because it's inconsistent, let's say field input, something like that. So these should be kind of fairly unique classes. I haven't seen these around, but let's continue. So first let's define the field container and the field container, we want to give it pretty much just a, a position relative class because we will need to have some absolute elements inside there. And we don't want to print those absolute elements in a totally random position. Then the other thing that we need to style, I want to style the error and the success, which are the basically the two main colors of my form. One is gonna be red and one is gonna be green. So I can say that the error class is gonna have a color of F00, something really bright and really abrupt. But of course, if you don't wanna use the default value, I have a Visual Studio Code extension that allows me to change the color and modify it a little bit. So maybe I can go slightly desaturated and darker. Yeah, it's less, it's less in your face, which is, it's okay. And then we need the success class that is gonna have a color. Let's type green by default. And then once again, let's use this super handy extension that will allow me to have something, pick a color, something like that. Perfect. Okay, if we save it and we access back our terminal, our style and form CSS should have changed and we can confirm by accessing the assets folder in my form.css. Yes, we have those classes and the file is minified. Fantastic. So if we access our front end and we refresh, our styling is not visible because we printed in a wrong way our CSS here. So let's change this super quickly. Let's access our testimonial controller right here. And let's change this link. First, this link href, it's an auto closing link. So we don't need to close the markup. Here we need to specify that this is a type of text forward slash CSS. 
and we can use the backward slash to avoid our double quotes to be escaped. And we could potentially also specify that this is a media that applies to all, so it's not a responsive type of style that applies only to a specific size. And then we need to specify to WordPress or our HTML, this is a rel attribute and the rel attribute it's an actual style sheet, so it should be interpreted as a style sheet. Perfect. So if we go back in our front end and we refresh, now our custom coloring was applied. So in the error, it's red, and in the success, it's green. Perfect. Now we know that our CSS works. Let's keep editing this thing. So in the contact form here, all our messages are represented by this class field messages. So let's change this field messages class and let's continue here by specifying field message class to be in position absolute. And then I want to have these to the left zero and bottom zero. And then we can style these in the console because we can see how it works. So let's go back in our front end, refresh. This is a weird position and everything is attached and squished because we don't have any more these that make the separator. So let's style a little bit something in line. We have a couple of classes that we can now easily tap. So we have our field container. We can say that every field container has a margin bottom of 10 pixels, something like that. Maybe let's do 20 pixels. Yes, we can do something like that, which is really, really nice to see, really nice to look. Copy this margin bottom here and let's paste it in the field container. Then we should apply this field container class also the contact form right here instead of having the text center just field container so if we refresh now also all the messages are here perfect and now we can specify something more extreme for the field message so instead of just having a position absolute bottom zero we can have the bottom to minus 20 so it's at the same time or actually slightly yeah minus 16 and then we can have a font size of 10 pixels and then text transform uppercase and then we can have also font weight to be bold or actually let's go 400 no 500 yeah, let's go 600 so it's not too bold. Here we can also decrease it a little bit. Let's go 9 pixels and then we can have a letter spacing of 0 0.1 emphasis or actually 0 0.05 EM. Perfect. And we can go back up a little bit. 14 pixels and then the left can be a couple of pixel and two pixel. Yes. Okay. I'd say that this is kind of like a proper styling. It's really, really simple, proper style. Let's just like copy everything and let's apply it to our form SCSS here in the field message. So we have everything properly styled. And if we refresh, just double check that our styling is there. Perfect. The last thing that we need to do, we need to put this display to none because all these messages are not visible by default. So if we refresh here, perfect. All the messages are there, but everything is hidden. And the thing that we can do, we can create a class that if these field message has a show class assigned to it, we can change display from none to block. And there you go. Now we have our own super cool message revealer that we can manage. So if we do an example, if we apply the show class here, oops, it doesn't work. Sorry. It's the ampersand. We need to specify in SCSS to say if this class has also this class assigned to it, and let's refresh to fix this and let's assign the show class. Perfect. Now your name is required, which is Amazing. Okay, our form now it's perfectly styled and our SCSS is not interfering with the default style or whatever other type of style that could use the same classes of the user that is using our plugin because everything is wrapped around this unique ID. The last thing that I want to do before concluding this tutorial, I want to tap this unique ID and listen for the form submit in our form.js and prevent the form submit. 
Because if we do a test, for example, if we go in the front end and we write something, for example, Alex and as at as.com, something like that, and this is my message, and I did a submit, the form, it's submitted, but we didn't specify a URL, it's going to this hash pound symbol, and of course nothing is properly handled. And the form submit directly in PHP without any sort of like small client side validation is not really great. So the thing that I wanna do here, I wanna prevent the form submit handling everything in JavaScript, doing an AJAX request in JavaScript, and then returning the results or like dealing with the form in whatever fashion I wanna do it. And the first and only thing that I wanna do before concluding this tutorial is actually preventing the form to be submitted anyway. So inside the DOM content loaded event listener, so we're not gonna start doing anything crazy with our JavaScript until the document is fully loaded. We can define a variable and we can use ES6 because now we're bundling and compiling so we can specify the let instead of var and let it's way cooler because we can update this thing and let's define our testimonial form variable that it's gonna be equal to a document get element by ID and now it comes super handy the ID that we specify it in our testimonial form. So alloc add testimonial form, boom, there you go. Now we can use this variable to listen for an event and the event that we want to listen with the listener at event listener of course is the submit because this is a form and whenever we try to submit the form this variable is going to emit this event submit so we can listen to it and we can deal everything with ES6 so we can use the error function ES6 to tap and do something, sorry, this is an arrow function. And here, what we can do, we can use the event and then prevent the default behavior of that event. And here we can just log something, for example, prevent form to submit, something like that. Really, really simple. Save it, we check our terminal. Yes, JavaScript was reloaded, form.js was reloaded, we can go back in our front end. Let's refresh, let's open our console. Here we can once again fill up with stupid stuff and then submit, there you go. The form wasn't submitted, but we triggered the JavaScript and prevented the form to be submitted. And now, because we're doing this, so we're avoiding the form to be submitted in that like a super empty page or something that doesn't exist, we can deal with our JavaScript here. And the things that we're gonna do here is basically reset the form messages, because if the form has errors messages, success messages, or stuff like that, we can reset them. Then we're gonna validate the email address, just to be sure that it's a legit email address, it's not completely made up and stuff like that. We can do a quick regex method to be sure that the email has a proper formatting. Then the other thing, we can collect all the data and then do an AJAX HTTP post request to our backend in order to store that. And we can also do some validation in the backend, but we're gonna take care of this in later videos. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I talk to you in the next one.